I call the honorable meeting of the Pasadena Independent School District Board of Trustees in regular session on Tuesday, August 27, 2019, in the Boardroom of Administration Building 1515 Cherry Brook, Pasadena, Texas, at 5.30 p.m. Board members present are Mr. Jack Bailey, Mr. Kenny Fernandez, Ms. Vicki Morgan, Mr. Fred Roberts, Mr. Nell Sullivan, Ms. Marisol Quijano, and myself, Marshall Kendrick. Board member absent, none. Let the record indicate that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting is duly called, and that notice of this meeting was posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code 5, Chapter 551. The invocation will be given by Mrs. Sullivan and the pledges by Mr. Fernandez. Would you please stand? My most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the many blessings of the day and the blessings that You've bestowed upon our district. We pray that You would lead and guide and direct us as we study and review the business of our district. Give, give us wisdom in making the decisions. We pray that You would be with each and every one of our faculty members as they start this year. We pray that you would be with our students and that you would give them open and receptive minds and hearts. Lead and guide and direct us. We ask that you would be with those who protect our country. Lead and guide and direct them as they make decisions that are the right decisions. We pray that you would be with us as we go into the further services of this meeting. Keep us ever in the center of thy will. These things we ask in thy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Texas flag. I am the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. We will stay here for the policy committee and the update, and then we'll adjourn to a closed session. Good evening, board members. We sent you guys um, in your packet update 112. That is um, a TASB initiated update. It focused on changes um, to policies related to changes to the Texas Administrative Code or other commissioner decisions that were issued in 2014. Um, you'll notice it's not a whole lot of po local policy changes and it's kind of sporadic. If there's any questions about anything individually, I can answer those. Um, and then we also sent you information related to a local district update 2019.01 that focused on um, local policy EIE related to grading practices. And um, Ms. Benner is here with me if we've got any questions on that. And then um, you'll also notice the board policy related to public comment. Um, and so I will say that TASB is still working on getting their exact um, drafts after this legislative session finalized for both local and regulations. And so we are taking action so that we're in compliance with the new legal requirements that go into effect September 1 tonight. Um, but we expect to recommend further um, clarifications and changes to that policy as TASB finalizes their recommendations and, and gives those to us in the coming months. Anybody have any questions along the way or any of this information? No. I've got one. Yes. EIA local? Yes. Page 19. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, two, three, four, fourth paragraph. Redo an, an assignment or an assessment to demonstrate mastery. Mm -hmm. So if we fail the test, we get to take it again. Have we been doing this normally? Um, it, we sh if uh, Becky can talk about practice, but yes, I think my understanding is yes. The education code that's di direct language from the education code is that we are supposed to um, essentially administer the assessment until we are able to determine mastery. Um, okay, so if so. You if you don't make it, you get another chance to tell you too much. Right, and they can be subject to disciplining and grading um, reductions, that, you know, based on sure. the code I of conduct and that. other things. Right. Yeah, um, but, you know, administration of assessment is supposed to determine mastery, and so that's what we're okay. supposed question. to be doing. Oh, on that, can I ask a question? Sure. You know, what, what is mastery? Because, you know, for example, um, you know, my kids have taken retaking test and the highest they can get is a 70. 
Right, and so that would be based on um, a grading reduction or discipline policy that limited the total score that they could receive for it. What we're looking for for mastery purposes is do, did they master the content based on that child's, you know, cognitive level? So even if your child received a 70 on the exam, their mastery may be an A level, but because of whatever reason that the grading reductions were in place, you know, it would have been lowered to that 70. But the assessment itself would demonstrate a higher, you know, content mastery level. Is, am I off on that? I mean, so I mean, they're taking it like they're having more time to study, more time to prepare. So there's a grading reduction, yeah. even though they may show complete mastery that second time around because they did study, yeah. or they studied harder, or they came for tutoring, or other opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's right. That that's pretty sense. good clarification. Yeah. As long as they make the seven, that's the key. Is it? They get over the hump and they get to mastery? Yes, sir. We want to make sure that if a student is not um, showing mastery or some level of ability to sure. pass, that we offer a reteach opportunity and then reassess the student to see what they know. And then we can adjust instruction accordingly. Sure, sure. If we just cut it off and say, you know, you failed too bad, move on, that's kind of the old way of doing yeah. things, but we're looking at how can we intervene and get our kids as far as we can yeah. get them. Absolutely. It doesn't mean we just let them retest, 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 right. till everybody right. makes 100. It isn't that. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Is that a cool situation? My kids don't. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny was talking about his own group. <laughs> <laughs> he must go back and retest. Uh, question. Yeah. And I know this came from... Uh, BED local mm -hmm. regarding the five minute to three minutes. We used to give five. We used the to give. change that. Yes. So um, <laughs> in this last legislative session, what the state said essentially is that we have to allow public comment at every board meeting for the items that are on the agenda. That's the way that we are interpreting their um, new legislation, which means. Where we didn't allow it at special called board meetings, we're going to have to start. Um, and, and so, if it's in, on the agenda, if it's, on, if it's an item on the agenda, um, and so in doing that, um, there's been a lot of you know discussion amongst you know TASB and their officials, CSA Council of School Attorneys, and the clients that you know those members represent, as well as districts about you know if we're not allowed to. If it's required and mandatory for every meeting, and now you cannot take, a board can't take action on an item um, until those individuals that have properly signed up for public comment have been given an opportunity to speak, okay. that essentially they can, you know, filibuster sure. um, and prevent, you know, okay. a board from taking action. And so moving to three minutes is um, what TASB's indicating to me that districts have expressed. The, the majority of districts have expressed as their um, standard with the opportunity or the ability of the board president to reduce it to one minute should time and the number of speakers, um, you know, dictate a situation in which that was necessary. Okay. In the past, we've always said that you got five minutes. There were three of you that want to talk about the same budget. Pick somebody. So now you're saying that they get that. three minutes, and if they have 12 people, we have to give them 12 minutes? Yes. Or cut it to one. Well, each each individual would get no more one. or no less than one minute. But yes, minutes. we yeah. cannot, um, based on the new legislation, it, there's no, my understanding of it at this point is there's no ability to require delegations to appoint a specific person okay. that each individual could sign up to speak. But they get a minute, period. If it were a situation, yes, yeah, that dictated that, yeah. But okay. not to exceed 30 minutes, correct? Well, and so, yes, so that's what our policy has always been, right, is we've limited the public comment portion to no more than 30 minutes, and it would, we would have limited it to whoever signed up first, right? If you were the first six people and you, each one was a different topic or delegation, then we would have had the full 30 minutes. Right. Um, of course, the board and the, and the president is the person that's over that, has the ability to say 30 minutes at the beginning, and if we don't get them all covered, we'll hear it, you know, we'll push them either to the, before we consider or take action on that item. Remember, because now we have to give them all an opportunity, everybody that signed up for it, to speak at least one minute um, on an item before a board takes action or deliberates it. 
So we can hear them at the beginning, or we can postpone action on that meeting, you know, action mm -hmm. on that item, or we can let them speak during, um, before the board deliberates on that action or takes action. I understand so, that speaking before the vote on the action, I have no problem with that, but I don't see why we would need 30 minutes. If we had 15 people, that's 15 minutes. Not necessarily. We mean not necessarily. One penny per person. <laughs> well. That's 15 minutes. So what, so what we've done in the past is set, set a maximum of 30. Yeah, I understand We've said, that. you know, we will spend no more than 30 minutes on public comment before we start the, the, the items of business on this agenda. And so we kept that portion right now. Um, if we want to in, in future, because I know that we're going to make more changes and edits to this as, as we're getting them from TASB, if we want to take that limit out and not set a time limit oh, and no. say we're going to devote 30 minutes to it, then we can do that um, in the subsequent edits. Oh, no problem, no problem. But now it says you also have to have three hours, they have to sign up before the meeting. Yes, that was what also. What do you do when people don't know that and come in here and they 30 minutes before the meeting, they sign up and say, we want to sign up, and you say, I'm sorry. Well, I think we should post it. I, I was think gonna... we should communicate it on our website. And mm -hmm. When they call right. Susan, communicate yes. it. This is something that's going on in districts around our area, and they're being, you know, told in advance. Who's, and when you're talking about multiple, let's say you're going to have 12 speakers on an agenda item, it's relevant for me to be able to tell you as board members, we're going to be here a while, and this is why. We're going to have speakers on this agenda item, or the, whatever agenda item it may be. So it's for preparation, sufficient preparation for the board meeting with them changing the rules. And they usually do call, right? Yes, they usually call Susan and ask how they go about signing up. Mm -hmm. And we may, you know, you of course as a board would have the authority to override, to that. override that sign up um, deadline at some point if you felt like an individual truly wasn't aware based on you know the timing of these updates or yeah. then, then you know we can consider those on a case-by-case -case basis sure. always we've never really had any abuse in no. a particular area and i would hope that that would be a rare situation so that everyone would say that we're not being you know transparent right. yeah you know, right i don't get that i don't think i don't see a problem there. i don't want to put the word out there about filibustering though <laughs> That's well, we never had any situation, that, no matter what's been. I mean, and that's my term, no one. Color knows. code or school so. uniforms or anything else or changing to one year contracts. We never had anybody come in here that, that took that much time in the first place. They say they're peace and they get out. So I don't, unless something crazy happens in this district, I don't foresee that. Correct. I mean, we're. Part of what we're doing, too, is looking at how our practices align with other That's districts fine. in yeah. the area and in the state, too, and, and, you know, taking that into consideration. And maybe we're being way more lenient because we haven't had that kind of issue. I would rather, you know, align our practices to other districts now rather than do it, you know, in response to some sort of issue at that point. Well, I'm sure some boards do a three hours, so they don't have to listen to anybody. Well, one of the so. things that we might do for a couple of months is, you know, just let it be as it is and tell them that in the future they need to sign up three hours early know. and let that be at the discretion of the president as to whether it has to be. I think the key is that we put out it. Like I do, Dean said, let everybody know that this is a, this is a situation mm -hmm. and you can call in and, and, and do it that way. But... Uh, we will certainly have to be lenient at the first couple of meetings to make sure everybody knows. I right, and so that. something else that TASB is specifically going to recommend in, in future policy updates yeah. is adding language that specifically says in policy, you know, the board is available to consider your written comments, and those can be submitted, you know, to the board secretary at this address or by email at the board at PasadenaISD.com sure. email address. And so even though you, you're... Your ability to speak, you know, orally at a board meeting may be limited to a minute. Certainly, there are other ways in which you guys um, that they can have access to you and that you can consider um, their their written thoughts or their written statements before we well, make action. Yeah, Take we've action. never been a board that wanted to quelch anybody had a difference mm -hmm. in opinion or different idea, or something new or something they were against. That's, that's what's called transparency. It's what we have to have. So I don't have any problem. Did anybody else? Should we make a motion on the policy? We'll do that later. Yeah, we'll yeah. take action later. Okay. Now, 
Thank you, Jody. No problem. We're going to adjourn the closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074 for the purpose of considering the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee or to hear complaints or charges against a public officer or employee concerning matters related to the superintendent's recommendations to hire administration personnel and are concerning matters related to the superintendent's recommendation related to renewals, non-renewals, and termination of contracts for personal personnel. 551.071 to consult with district attorneys concerning matters on which the attorneys need to the district under the Code of Professional Responsibility clearly conflicts with the Texas Open Meetings Act to seek the advice of a term by pending or contemplated litigation or settlement offer or to consider legal advice regarding items specifically listed in the agenda. 551.072 for the purpose of discussing the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real <coughs> property. We will reconvene at 7 o'clock. We will reconvene in open session. First thing we have on the agenda is public hearing on budget and proposed tax increase. Tax rate. It's a decrease. Tax rate, excuse me. It's actually a decrease. This <laughs> good, good evening. This is our public hearing on the tax rate. We need to set the tax rate, and we have had our notice in the paper for our required 10 days in advance for the meeting. We are dropping our tax rate because currently on the M&O side, it's $1.20, and starting for the new year that we're going to send tax notices out, it will drop down to $1.09. This is because of the compression rate for House Bill 3, and this is our first year to see that it will decrease down to $1.09. So at this time, we're going to open it up to, I mean, and with this tax rate, it does cover our local budget, and so we still have a uh, surplus that we're adding to the local budget this year, but at this time, if we could open it up to uh, any community members that would like to address the board, this is their time to do so. Do we have anybody here that would like to address either the budget or tax rate at this time? We'll do a little teacher wait time, give them 60. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> anybody? Anybody? Okay. And we will approve the budget later in the financial section. Right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Next item is public hearing on community school. Mr. Swan. Good evening. <laughs> Mine's not near as interesting, but every year the TA requires that we have an open hearing on the approval of the optional flexible school day program for community school. And that's what this is for tonight. If anybody has anything that they would like to say about community school or any questions. More wait time. But I would like to present some statistics that I think the board will appreciate tonight. And I've asked Jennifer Capra if she would please do that. Thank you. Good evening. We wanted to uh, communicate with you some information about um, the success of community school that you might not be aware of because uh, it's hard to pull statistics on our campus. So just to give you some perspective, our campus opened uh, 10 years ago, this is our 10th year, in 2010, and that year we had 56 students graduate from community school. As of 2017-2018 school year, we had 174 graduates. And as of the end of this last school year, we accomplished 230 graduates. And we hit a graduation rate. We hit a graduation rate of 83% of enrollment. Uh, that's for some of the most at-risk students in the, in the district. Uh, furthermore, just to throw some extra in there, at the 2019 um, summer graduation, there were 96 graduates uh, slated to walk. Of those, 54 of them were students who had either been enrolled in and finished through community school or finished their graduation requirements through our summer school program. So, thank you for our total graduates. Total graduates for the 10 years? We're over 1,500. Wow. That's amazing. We've provided a new future and a new life for those kids, and I thank y'all. Next 
a special recognition tonight? Yes, no? we do. We do. We're off and running with the new school year, but we want to recognize some outstanding 2019 Texas State Solo and Ensemble Contest Outstanding Performers. So tonight we will honor two of our high school students for competing in the 2019 Texas State Solo and Ensemble Contest in Austin. And Linda Fletcher, of course, needs no introduction, our Director of Fine Arts, will say a few words about the competition and our students. Thank you, Dr. Powell. Mr. Kendrick, the board members, I appreciate you allowing me the time to recognize these wonderful young men. We all know the importance of fine arts, and it's not a frill. It's, it's important to these students, to our district, to our community, and to this wonderful board. Um, music builds many many skills for our students and fine arts students learn to create they learn to collaborate they learn to problem solve perseverance collaboration and accountability on june 1st this summer 25,000 band choir and orchestra students went to state solo and ensemble contest in at ut in austin and only students that receive a Div Division I, which is the highest you can make in solo and ensemble, and on a Class I solo, which is the hardest solo to learn and to perform, are allowed to go to the state competition. Joshua and Julian earned a Division I rating at the state contest and were selected as outstanding performers. Only 2 to 3 percent of those 25,000 musicians who perform at the Texas State Solo and Ensemble Contest earned this dis distinguished honor of being recognized as an outstanding performer. So tonight we recognize from uh, passing ISD, Doby High School student who is graduating and majoring in going to major in music and be a choir director. Dear to my heart is Joshua Cox. <laughs> Joshua, would you come? His teachers are Wendy Sharpless and Tyler Ruberg, and I appreciate uh, his assistant principal, Mr. Clinton Hopper, sitting in the back for attending also. And uh, Joshua, are any of your parents or family friends here tonight? If they are, would you please stand so we can thank you and recognize you. Our next young gentleman, and Joshua is graduating. Like I said, he's major. He's going to San Jacinto, the new uh, University of Houston. He just said to major in music, and be he wants to be choir director. So from South Houston High School, a junior is Julian Chavez. Julian, would you please come forward? <laughs> His directors are uh, Brenda Varvitas and Courtney Howard. Courtney, would you please stand? We recognize. And the whole cadre, Ms. Andrea Winky, the principal, and her cadre are all, the, lot, many uh, assistant principals in the back there. <laughs> Thank you all for coming tonight. We congratulate Joshua and Julian from South Houston and Dobie for this achievement of musical excellence. And parents for Julian? Uh, parents, I'm so sorry, for Julian. Any parents from Julian? Yeah. Yeah. And family. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, we're excited to see all the student achievements this year. And Linda, we know you'll be back to celebrate more this year as we continue through the school year. So thank you. And that's all we have for now. Thank you. That's fantastic. Tonight we have next item is public comments, of which we have none tonight. Next is the consent agenda. Mr. President, I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Those no. Motion passes. Personnel section. Ms. Kiana. Mr. President, I move that we approve uh, personnel addendums A through C. Second. Motion Ms. Kiana. Second by Mrs. Morgan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those no. Motion passes. I'd like to introduce our first uh, pers new uh, personnel section. I'd like to welcome to Pasadena ISD is Miss Valerie Torres French. <laughs> Ms.
welcome to Pasadena ISD. Um, you are the new counselor for South Houston Intermediate School, um, Intermediate, and you come from Pearland ISD. Well, welcome to Pasadena. Do you have any family with you this evening you'd like to introduce? <laughs> Welcome. Next, there's a big congratulations to our new behavioral health specialist, is not new to Pasadena ISD, Ms. Oraleva Riva. Welcome, you are from San Rayburn High School. So do you have any family with you this evening? I do. I have my husband, my mom, and my uncle. All right. Okay. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to our new assistant principal at Melillo Middle School, who comes from Fred Roberts Middle School, is Ms. Jennifer Sauceda. Introduce to us your family. Um, I have my husband here, John. My son, Brandon, who attends Laura Bush Elementary. My son, Andrew, who attends Bondi Intermediate. My mother-in-law, Juanita. Um, I want to thank Ms. Harold for supporting our campus and for supporting me in here. My principal, Mr. Jarley Thomas, and the rest of my aviator family. Um, I also have here Ms. Christine Coppage, there's kids I can find her, uh, Principal <laughs> Williams Elementary, Adriana Robinson from Doby Mine. Um, I also have here today my Malula family, Ms. Wheeler, Mr. Boo, and the rest of my Mustang family. Um, and last but not least, Mr. Fred Roberts, I want to thank you for always making me feel like Oh. That was beautiful. As you can see, we're all a big family here. So welcome. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Congratulations. Now, if anybody would like to sneak out and not stay for the business meeting, you're certainly welcome to do so. <laughs> Give you a few minutes to do so. You leaving? <laughs> Hey, Jolly. Put a gate on the place. <laughs> Doesn't work. That's what happens when you create great people. That's right. At least like three or four from us. You got to share the wealth. That's true. <laughs> That's what you want to do is fly, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would somebody tell Mr. Savager where he's supposed to sit? I saw it, right, Joe? <laughs> we'll get on with the meeting. I move to consideration of possible approval of reclassification of internal auditor AO2 to financial compliance audit coordinator AO2 reporting to the chief financial officer. So moved. Second. Motion to move Morgan. Second with Mr. Hernandez. Any comments or questions? The board members, we had discussed uh, looking at models across uh, region for one another districts. And we, of course, appreciated uh, all of the efforts Maritza had made with her department, and she's moved on to bigger and better things, but thankfully here in PISD. Um, so we looked at some of the departments and big budgets like fuel, uh, construction budgets, and other, uh, the energy management that we're working with right now, and some areas of audit. So this person will still come back and make reports to you and work with me as well, uh, but we're going to move them over to our business office so that we can have uh, constant communication and, and uh, when we have areas of need, uh, we can focus on that and get the training out and the correction
action action plans in place quickly and then report back to you on those as well. Thank you. Did we vote? No. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of Aetna contract renewal for 2020 CSP number 16 028. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? I have a question. Yes, this is the last year on this, is that correct? Yes. And then it, it will possibly go out for RFP next year? That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion passes. <clears throat> Consideration, we'll see. We have certified personnel, support personnel for information only. Educational section, consideration of possible approval of general waivers from the Texas Virtual School Network Course Review Process for passing of virtual school courses time, excuse me, courses, time to me. So moved. Second. <laughs> Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by who? Second. Mrs. Kihana, Kihano, excuse me. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible purely ongoing subscription with Texas State Library and Archives Commission for the 2019-2020 school year. So moved. Welcome to Ms. Morgan, second with Mr. Hernandez. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible purely interlocal agreement with Region 4 Education Service Center, ESC4, for the purchase of undated so suite software. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Is that right? Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of the Texas Education Agency Grant Award. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? Always got to get the award. Yep. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of Modified Environmental Defense Fund, EDF, grant award in the amount of $633 and the approval of the corresponding amended EDF grant agreement. So moved. Second. Motion moved. Marty, second. Mr. Hernandez. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 No. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of Sam Raven High School Renegade Theater Troop to travel to New York City, New York, June 2 through 5, 2020. So moved. Second. Morgan, Ms. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? Great I opportunity. A, I think, hope to have a wonderful time. Sounds like a great, great opportunity. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. To the achievement, we're working on it now because we just started. Policy section, consideration possible adoption of TASB. Local policy update 112, affecting local policies designated on the attached instruction sheet. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible adoption of local district update 2019, oh, excuse me, 2019.01, affecting BED local and EIA local. So moved. Second. What do you Morgan, second Mr. Hernandez. Herman Hernandez, any comments or questions? What's your name, Mr. Hernandez? <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no motion passes. As you get older, you can't talk as well. Consideration of possible approval of budget amendments. I move that we approve the budget amendments. Second. What's my name, Morgan, second Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions regarding budget amendments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of budget amendments, August. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Morgan. Second, no, Ms. Kihana. Second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of GASB 54 fund bonds resolutions. Second. Motion by Mr. Hernandez, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval additional funding for PISD medical plan. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? 
Well, last year, as you know, we put about an additional $8.5 million toward um, our medical plan, and we made some changes to our deductibles, our premiums, things of that nature, and those changes went into effect January 1st of 19, so we've had since then to see any benefit. Um, so now that we need to close out, it looks like instead of 8.5, we're asking for 5 million. So in taking that into consideration for this new budget that you're about to approve, we took the amount that the school district will contribute up to 295, that's $50 per employee, which should equal $5 million. So we're very hopeful that barring some extreme cases, uh, which we know we'll have some, but any major um, outstanding cases that we will balance out next year. That is the goal always, but again, we're planning for that in the budget this year, rather than coming to you and asking for additional money separate from the budget. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval of resolution concerning PISD 457 Voluntary Retirement Savings Plan. So moved. Second. Motion to move to the market. Second. Settlement. Any comments or questions? I think it's a great idea. Any other? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion passes. Consideration possible pre adoption of 2019-2020 budget. I move that we approve the adoption of the 2019-20 school budget. Second. Motion made to Martin. Second, Mr. Robert. Hello there, next week. Any comments or questions? There have been very few changes since you saw it last time. I just want to thank administration for the hard work. I know. Many, many hours have been put into this and a lot of thought and consideration for the betterment of our district and the things that we can do to be the most successful, and I certainly do appreciate all the hard work. And it's been an interesting year. Yeah. I mean, you think about the first template came out at Memorial Day weekend, and we're now on template eight, and we're not sure that will be our last. In fact, we don't believe it will. But all along the way, Carla's been uh, very vigilant about uh, having our numbers checked by TASBO and Moke and Casey. We've gone to trainings. We've been to Austin. So we're not just relying on putting the numbers in and hoping for the best. We're, we're, we're comparing continuously. And as changes come, in which they may, um, if we're on template eight and there may be further ones, we'll keep you updated of any new additional information that we get from the state. Well, I'm proud, too, of the fact that this is one of the first years that we've actually done, um, had at least a major attempt at zero-based budgeting. And uh, I know that was a change. I know that um, it, it probably, like any change, has met with some uh, concerns. And uh, But I think y'all have done a tremendous job. And I appreciate the job that's been done. And I'm excited about what we've been able to do for teachers and for staff. I think that it's well-deserved. And I'm just excited. Good. We felt good about the work. I mean, it was it was last minute, it seemed, you know, because we would have liked to have been uh, informed sooner. But it is what it is, and it's a, House Bill 3 is a step in the right direction. Oh, absolutely. It's not the answer, and it's not the long-term fix. As we all know, we don't know what we face after next year. Uh, but it's definitely a step in a, a more positive direction. Well, it was a great step forward for the legislature for a change, and uh, it's great that we can reward a great family of people that work so hard for our kids. And, uh, Absolutely. It's just really agree. nice that we can do that. They do a wonderful job. Any other comments? Have we passed this yet? No. No. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no motion passes. Consideration of possible approval adoption of 2019 tax rate. I move we approve the tax rate for 2019. Second. Motion is Second. Mr. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? All opposed? All for it? I'll give you a minute. All opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible resolution concerning investment policy investment strategy review. So moved. Second. Motion on Mrs. Sullivan, second on Mrs. Morgan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval renewal of interlocal agreement with TASB as third party administrator for workers' compensation. 
2019-2020. So moved. Second. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Operation section. Consideration of possible pool of transfer of 2011 bond program unused project funds to the bond contingency pool. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Cajano. Any comments or questions? I thought we did that a long time ago. Kevin, we hadn't done this one yet, correct? No. We're trying to, like I had said earlier, we're trying to settle up on a lot of these before the changes of having to have the additional meeting. Correct. correct. Okay, yeah. yeah, we just have projects that we're doing final reconciliation on. We bring them as we do that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible public con Continuation of bond projects and funding for the 2014 bond contingency. Pool. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Morgan, second by Ms. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? And this was an overage required by our fire marshal, which now we're building into our projects because this isn't the only one we've been asked to do. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval allowance expenditure authorization AEA number 0 .02 for the new Red Bluff Elementary Replacement Project. So moved. Second. Motion by Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration of possible approval change order number 0 .002 for the South Houston High School Science Lab Renovation Project. So moved. Second. By Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Consideration possible approval of the NLX Farmley Inner NOC Demand Response Service Agreement Renewal. So moved. Second. Morgan. Motion by Mrs. Morgan, second by Mrs. Sullivan. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Construction update. Any comments or questions? We have no additional comments for tonight. Meeting the next prayer meeting September 24th. Yes, sir. Question. Can I ask a question back at the budget? And it's, it doesn't need to be voted on or anything, but is there anything in additional that the superintendent has to add that's in the budget that deals with? Yeah, um, excitingly. Think, well, I was going to say, I thought we passed over that, and I think it's a pretty well, neat deal, and it, I think. Uh, in addition to the raises that all of our employees got in each group, um, those the raises that y'all graciously approved this summer, um, you now, by approving this budget, will allow for a $250 retention bonus for every employee who was here last year and is still here at Christmas time. So it's a little extra change in the pocket. And what I've been telling staff, so I've gone out and talked to them, is, you know, it's a separate check. So if you don't want to tell your husband or your wife, I mean, <laughs> hey. You know, it's a separate check. Yeah, so yeah, 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 just yeah. a little extra, little that's extra good. thank you. Hey, you know, naughty, I think that's naughty. great. Yeah. A little extra I think thank it's you. Great. And because uh, everybody can use a little extra money at that time of year, and I think y'all worked your hearts out, and and uh, you, you're not only giving a a, a good raise, but that little extra two hundred and fifty dollars is is. Uh, I hope everybody appreciates it, and yeah. and. Uh, I wear an extra large shirt, <laughs> and uh, so it's, uh, you know, whatever. Now you have a tie. You have a tie. It'd be nice to have a tie and jacket. I can oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's kidding. <laughs> no, no. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> he better be. Yes. That's very good. We're very proud of that. Thank you. Thank you all. Well, it's a good place to be. It's a good place to be. Uh, Next meeting, September the 24th. Any comments or questions or motions? That's my birthday. I think we need to change that. Uh, make a motion. <laughs> second by Ms. Kiana, second by Ms. Morgan. September the 24th, will be our next meeting. Any other What? All approved? All approved. And by I then, know. you'll be the number one board in Kansas. Yeah. By, by then, then, you'll be 39. Yeah. We want to be. We have a lot of work to do between now and the next board meeting. Do we have a meeting next week? Yes. I yeah. so. No, we do. Is that right? On the 12th. On the 12th. Okay, we better approve this. Everybody in favor? <laughs> yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Okay. Everybody in favor.
motion passes September 24th. No other business before this meeting. We adjourn.